Okay, fast. Okay, so yesterday you learned something new. You learned about Kirchhoff law, right? Eh? Kirchhoff first law, Kirchhoff second law. What Kirchhoff first law said? In a at a junction, the total current flow into the junction. Current entering a junction is equal to total current going out of a junction. Very good. Uh, Kirchhoff second law. Total EMF is equal to total potential difference. Okay, good. Across the, all the resistors in a in a closed loop. Eh? You have to say closed loop. Very good. Good. So yeah. So for the second law, you say closed loop. For the first law, you say adjunction. Okay. So these two laws are used to find the resistors formula. So resistors in series. So if a resistors in series. Which law has been used? Is the for this case is the second law. Yeah, a potential difference is applied across the resistor the series in resistors. The current through all the resistors is the same. The potential difference across each resistor is different. The sum of this individual uh, potential difference is equal to the uh, EMF, which uh, of second law. So yeah, with reference to Kirchhoff second law, eh? the V1 is IR1, V2 is IR2, V3 is IR3, I same. Eh? So V is V1 plus V2 plus V3, we know from Kirchhoff second law. So we substitute the V1, V2, V3 as IR1, I2, R3. Then this V is V over I. So we get total resistance. Okay, as the equal resistance of the series combination is given by R1 plus R2 plus R3. This could be like a two or three marks derivation. You can ask an exam. I think series has been asked, uh, parallel not yet. Eh? So you have to say it's a Kirchhoff second law, then you have to show this derivation, prove that how they got resistance formula in series. Okay. So in general, if they are in resistance, they got N resistance add up. To get the totally total resistance. Okay, okay uh, this is a, just a warm up question. Written the value of R when the current in the circuit is 0 0.2 ampere. So, how do you find the R? So, 0 0.2 ampere. So 9 divided by 0 0.2 should give you the total resistance, right? Then you minus with 5, you get the resistance of R. So find the total resistance first. So anyone wants to answer? So you find 9 divided by 0 0.2 to get the total resistance. Resistance. Uh, 45. 45, right? Yeah, 45. So 5 plus R is 45. So R is going to be 40. Yeah. yeah. So it's 40. Okay. Okay. Uh, resist in parallel. How they derived? So resist in parallel. Uh, we use Kirchhoff first law. Current flow into the junction equals to current leaf junction. Resistors are connected in parallel. All resistors have the same potential. The current branches out in I1, I2, I3. Lower the resistance, I the current. Yeah, lower the resistance means I the current. The total current in the circuit is the sum of the individual current. Yeah, uh, Kirchhoff first law. Yes. From Kirchhoff's law, I equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3. I is V over R total, V over R1, V over R2, V over R3. R, V is the same because parallel. So all V cancel, you get the total resistance formula. As I say, it could be two or three marks question. Okay. So you must mention what law? Kirchhoff's law, type the total current on mark and the cancellation of the V and final appearance. So this is actually the theory behind that. You know this formula since you're from four or O levels.
But now, how they got it? The theory behind it, you get to know uh, by using Kirchhoff first law. So the foundation of the circuit formulas are Kirchhoff first law and second law, uh, mainly for the resistance. Okay. So let's we do this question. The first one. Determine the value of R and the effective resistance across AB is 2.5 ohm. What's the answer? Come on, give a try. Total is 2.5. So 1 over 2.5 equals to 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over R, right? Eh? So you find the R. That's the answer. So total is uh, AB is 2.5. Eh? Can anyone got the answer? What's the answer? Give me three significant figures. One. Minus this two, the other side. So one ten. over ten, eh? Okay, so ten ohm. Yeah, make sense for ten ohm. Okay. okay. Next one. All resistors shown in the diagram have the same resistance. Determine the effective resistance across AB. Because let's I give you a value. All the resistance here, assume they are, all of them are 2 ohm. All of them are 2 ohm. What is the effective resistance across AB? Okay, this is tricky. Um, I've come across most of uh, the previous seniors, your seniors, unable to visualize the idea. Huh? You see, Resistance AB, that means you must imagine that the current started at A and the current destination is B, okay? Like, like you know, car, like uh, you, have, uh, you have a few cars on the road, let's say uh, 10 of you, 10 of you like 10 cars. Eh? You want to start your journey from A, but all of you want to reach B. How many ways to reach B? So A to B, one route has two ohm. A to B, there is another route, which is how much? Another route, you can go down A, D, C, and B. So another route will give you 6 ohm. These three add up together. Okay? So these 2 ohm and 6 ohm, it's a two ways to reach a B, right? Start at A, reach at B. So these two road, if you, two ways to reach the B, that means these two road is connected parallel or series. Two ways you can reach the B. Uh, like for example, uh, I just uh, I try to th think about the practical application. Like you want to move from, uh, okay, you want to go from, uh, let's say, from uh, KL City uh, to, Sa so to Sunway, I say, imagine, Sunway, okay? You have two ways to go, let's say. One is you follow the Federal Highway, another one use the NPE, uh, NPE, Highway. Okay, the NP and Federal Highway, is it two ways to reach the same destination? Eh? The two, two routes are parallel to each other or series to each other? Parallel to each other or series to each other? Come on. If they want to build a bridge, and they, want to, they want to build another way to reduce traffic, they must build another highway parallel to the original routes or series to the original routes. Parallel. It would be parallel, right? So this AB, these two routes are parallel. So what is the effective resistance of uh, AB? So 1 over R AB equals to 1B is 2, so 1 over 2. Another way is 1 over 6. Uh, this is your key. Yeah. So 1 over RB equals to R AB equals to what? 6. So three, this is three, this is plus one, so six over four, so 1.5 ohm, eh? R, A, B. Okay. 
So hope you don't go on one point five baby. One one point five ohm. Yeah? So you imagine. Now can you get the effective resistance for AC? Imagine you start your journey at A, you finish it at C. Uh, someone give a try. One minute for you. Let me the final answer. Okay, so now you are starting at A, you are finishing at, uh, yeah, you are finishing at C. All two ohm. Two ohm. Uh, or, or two ohm, eh? Oh yeah, so A, B, C, one root, which involves four ohm. A, D, C, another root, involves for another four ohm. So yeah, one over R, A, C is, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. And so you have 2 ohm. Very good. So R A C is 2 ohm. Okay, so effective distance. Eh? Okay. Okay, this one. Give me the answer. Two wires made of same material. And the same length are connected in parallel to the same voltage supply. Wire P has a diameter of 2 mm. Wire Q has a diameter of 1 mm. Do we done this question before? Okay, anyway, give a try. Come on. So the battery was connected, it's two wires. Okay. Uh, both are same material, so both row same. Both are same length, so L is same. Both uh, diameter, eh? one is 2 mm, another one is uh, 1 mm. So P here, Q here, P is 2 mm. 2 mm, eh? uh, 2 mm, and this is 1 mm. I tell you, the uh, diameter is the culprit. Eh? You change to area. So this 1 mm, you take it as A. This 2 mm, you take it as how many A? For a eh? when diameter double area become two square for a eh? okay so current in p and over current in q is what four four eh? oh, i think we done this question okay so you get four eh? so you do v equals to ir v equals to ir to so make i as a what i as v v over r then B, the R you must replace is row L, A. Then this you have to use up and down to find the answer for. I think you should get for. Eh? Okay, I skip this. We done this. This is the working. Eh? Comparing. Okay, this is a very good question. Come on, give it a try. This one. What's the answer? How does the resistance in P and Q are uh, compared? Actually, the P wire has been split into few wires, and the few wires are connected in parallel. Mm -hmm. This is from a resistor Q. How do the electrical resistance of P and Q compare? Okay, so how do you do? So first, the AQ is same as AP over seven. Uh, because it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, sorry, three, six, seven, seven wires. Uh -huh. So AQ is uh, one over seven of AP, uh, the area. Uh -huh. Resistance of each wire in Q is RQ equal to 7RP. 
because area becomes seven times smaller huh? the resistance is going to rise by seven times because resistance is what r equal to resistance is rho l over a1 huh? when the a itself become a over seven i think the resistance becomes seven times or seven areas so seven rp okay so one rq y here got seven rp so let rp goes to r we assume rp is r so effective rq is how much 107 rp plus 107 rp plus 107 rp equals 7 what so all the times 7 la huh? reciprocal you get rp so conclusion is conclusion is resistance of rq and rp is the same, no difference. Eh? C is the answer. Eh? P and Q have equal resistance. Equal resistance. So they no, not a different resistance. Okay. So the area is become one over seven, but the resistance one over them become seven RP. You do one over seven RP, one over seven RP, one over seven RP for seven times, you receive properly. Uh, you get the same resistance as RQ. Okay, for this answer. Any question from this? Anyone? Okay, we go to the next question. Eh? Okay, pass. Come on, your turn. Eh? So, if a current under milliampere flows in 40 ohm resistor, calculate V across 30 ohm. How do you do this? Okay, you check it now. Eh? The current flow here is 100 milliampere. So, what is the voltage across 30 ohm? Anyone? 20 and 40 ohm are connected in series with 30. Yes, correct. So, voltage of 30 ohm should be equal to, because this is in uh, this, and these two are in, in parallel one, eh? right? So the 30 ohm voltage must be same as voltage of 20 ohm plus the voltage of 40 ohm. Right. Eh? So V across 30 ohm is actually V across 20 and 40 ohm because they are parallel. Eh? They are parallel. So they split here, eh? they are parallel. So V V across 20 ohm is 100 times 60. Yeah, 60 total resistance. Lah. Current flow here under milliampere means current for 20 ohm also should be 100 milliampere. Eh? So answer should be 6 volt. Eh? So this will be 6 volt. 100 times 60 ohm. Why 60 ohm? Because the 20 and 40 together in the series add up 60 ohm. Current flow is 100. So you get the total voltage. Eh? 6 volt. Okay. So 2. Find the current through 30 ohm. So V equals to IR. If you know two quantity, you can find the third one, right? You know the you know 30 ohm resistor. Resistor is 30 ohm. You know voltage just now. You know the voltage of 30 ohm is six. So you can find the current. Eh? You definitely can find the current. So six divided by 30. So 200 milliampere. 6 divided by 30 0 0.2, so 200 milliampere, or 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.2 ampere. Eh? Okay, so current flow in the 30 ohm is found to be uh, 200 milliampere. What is the I through 10 ohm? What is the current flow in 10 ohm? So you use Kirchhoff first law. Current flow into the junction, because the current leaves the junction. Right, eh? So the current across the 20 ohm and 30 ohm added should be the current at 10 ohm, right? 
Kirchhoff uh, first law. So, current in the circuit is 100 times 200, 100 plus 200, 300 million ampere. That is current in the 10 ohm. Eh? The two, 200 plus 100 should make the uh, total current in the 10 ohm. So, next, what is the V across the power supply? What is the voltage in the power supply? So, you know, current here is 300 milliampere. You know, current here 200, 100. What is the total V in the power supply? So, you can use Kirchhoff second law. Use the loop rule, loop. Eh? Maybe you take the first loop. First loop. Total volt EMF, which is the voltage of the power supply, is equals to potential drop across the resistors in that loop. Potential drop here is the potential across 10 ohm plus potential across 30 ohm. Eh? So use a loop. You can find any loop. You can use this loop. You can use the, the bigger one also can. Okay. So V source equals to V across 10 ohm and V across 30 ohm based on Kirchhoff's second law. So it's 9 volt. That makes sense. Eh? Voltage across 10 ohm is 300 times 10. So you get 3 volt. Voltage across 30 ohm is 30 times 200. So you got six volts, so altogether nine volts. Nine volts. Okay, any question from here? So a mixture of Kirchhoff's laws to be used and the series parallel resistance formula. Eh? Okay, if no have question, we go to the next slide. Before you go to the potential divider. Oh, class, I think I need to finish the potential divider. Then it should be easier. Okay, let's finish up the potential divider first. Then before we go to the question. So I think this is very important. Okay. The next part of the DC circuit is potential divider. Uh, indirectly, you learn this without the name. Uh, shown okay. So, use potential divider arrangement can be used to divide the input voltage in the ratio that we want. For example, the circuit diagram for potential divider arrangement is shown below, like for example, like this. Uh, okay, you see, you have a power supply of Vs. Okay, you have a power supply of Vs. Power supply of Vs. You have two resistance, the resistance dividing the voltage V1 and V2. Eh? Okay, so. The R1 and R2 act as a potential divider. We call it potential divider because you divide the potential. Okay. Okay. Now, can you tell me if I put a voltmeter across here, across here, I put a voltmeter, uh, which is V1. Can you tell V1 in terms of R2, R1, and Vs? Can you tell me a formula? V1 in terms of R1. R2 and Vs. So uh, to understand that, let me give you one example. Eh? You have a battery, you have six volt. Uh, one resistance is two ohm. Uh, another resistance is uh, say uh, four ohm. Okay. What is the voltage across four ohm? So how do you calculate voltage across four ohm? So ratio, right? It's a ratio. Six ohm uses six volt. Okay, six ohm uses six volt. So four ohm uses how much? X. Uh, so find the four ohm. Huh? So six ohm divided by six volt equals to four ohm divided by X. Okay, so you can find the X. X is four volt. Okay, X is for all. So here, can you find the V1? Can you find the V1? So who uses Vs? Who uses Vs? R1 plus R2 is proportional to Vs. Okay, R1 and R2 uses Vs. So R1 how much? R1 proportional to the V1. Now we're looking for the V1. Can you get the V1? So V1 is actually 
V1 over, sorry, V1, sorry, yeah. Yeah, R1 plus R2 over R1 should be, sorry, not R1, Vs, eh? Vs should be equals to, okay, no space. Let me, this, eh? Okay, so next slide can tell you before that, eh? you're better. Okay, just for one. Okay. Okay. So R1 over R2 over Vs must be equal to R1 over V1. So V1 equals to 1. V1 will be R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vs. Okay. This is the formula. Right. So V1 is the voltage across here. Just finding the ratio of the resistance times the total voltage will give you the voltage at the bottom. This is called potential divider. Okay, potential divider. Okay, for example, next slide. You have Vs, you got R1 and R2. What is the voltage across R2? So the final formula. Eh? R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vs is your V2. Okay. What is the voltage across V1? What is voltage across the R1, sorry? So R1 over R1 plus R2, the resistance across the V1 divided by the total resistance in series times the total voltage give you the voltage across the R1. It's called potential divider. What is so special about potential divider? Okay, you have a light bulb, you have a, you have a battery, you have a light bulb, okay? You want to control the brightness of the light bulb. You want to control the brightness of the light bulb. You fix a rheostat in series or parallel to the light bulb. Anyone? You want to control the brightness of the light bulb. You, are, you, will, con you will connect a rheostat or variable resistor in series or parallel to the light bulb to control the brightness of the light bulb. Series. Series. Yeah, you put a in series. Okay. Why? Because if we adjust the resistance of this rheostat, the voltage across the light bulb will drop. Many ways to explain. Eh? Voltage will drop. So when the voltage drop, actually the brightness of a light bulb is determined by the voltage. Eh? When the voltage drops, the brightness drops. So what is the function of variable resistor here? What is the function of variable resistor here? It acts as a potential divider. Okay, it act as a potential divider. The variable resistor act as a potential divider. Hmm. In Ohm's law circuit, the variable resistor's function is to act as a potential divider, dividing the potential. Okay. So V1 over V2 can be V1 over V2 equals to R1 over R2. It depends on the ratio of the resistance. Eh? Bigger the resistance, big voltage it consumes. Okay, before we go to this. Now, so, um, does, does this have to do with like those like switches where if it heats up, the resistor goes up and then the voltage would not go or go? For the circuit. Yeah, like when one, like for example, if the resist, resistor is, um, the one that detects light, if it gets lighter, the resistance drops and it will affect how the circuit works. Uh, it acts as a, the resistor. The resistor. You mean, you mean, I couldn't get your question actually. <laughs> so you have a, okay, you have a circuit, you have a light bulb, is it? If light bulb, yes, then? It, it detects light, like for example, the sunlight, sunlight. Oh, you mean sensor, the LDR. Yeah. Yeah. Light and then resistor. Yeah. Is, does it does this have to do with that? Yeah, LDR also all the sensors, eh, like LDR, uh, thermistor, potential uh, divider in the circuits. Yeah, the, the, the LDR all are playing as a potential divider in the circuit to change the brightness of the light bulb or maybe speaker and so on. Okay. okay. 
So all the controllers in the electronic circuits, that sensor have to be in series in the circuit, so they'll act as a potential divider. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, does potential divider only applies to uh, series circuit? Uh, only in series. Potential divider in parallel doesn't make any difference. For okay. It never divide the voltage, right? If you put it in parallel. Uh, so only in series. Okay. Okay. Uh, before we go to this, okay, let's we go to the past here first. Eh? Pass here. Okay, this one. Oh my God, I don't know, something's wrong with my computer. It suddenly become jam, I don't know why. It's already fixed. Okay, okay. okay class, I think I go back to the PowerPoint. Eh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, you get to do the question later. Okay. Uh, you see this circuit? Okay, this circuit. Eh? This circuit, you have 1000, 2000, 2000, and R4 here. Eh? Determine the resistance of R4 so that the old meter shows a zero rating. Okay. What is the value of R4 so that the old meter gives zero reading? Okay, how do you find? Anyone can give find for me? Maybe I haven't seen this yet, but you can use the potential divider method to find the R4. Okay, I give you one minute for you. If anyone can manage to get good, what do you think the R4 will be? So the voltmeter reading at the center here, which connecting the point A and point B, eh, is reading zero. So how do we do this? Okay, if this is so for the potential here to be zero, the potential at A must be same as potential at B, right? Potential at A must be same as potential at B. Let's say I give a number here. Eh? Let's say this is 10 volt. The potential here is A to be positive 10. Potential here negative, we assume as zero volt normally. Eh? So potential here is how much? Positive 10. Potential here, positive 10 volt. Potential here also positive 10 volt. After crosses the resistance, the potential will drop. Okay. Positive 10, don't know, it's going to drop something, we don't know how much. So you got a new potential VA. After it crosses the 2000 ohm, the potential is going to drop to zero volt here. Because it's all a zero volt. Uh, because no other resistance is here. Okay, so to get VA and VB same, the voltage across 1000 ohm and the 2000 ohm must be the same. Then only voltage at A and B must be same. When the voltage A and B same, you put across a voltmeter, the voltmeter going to read zero because voltmeter reads potential difference. The two, two wires connecting a two point, if the potential, the both, both wires give the same potential. The potential difference we're going to read is zero. Okay. So, at which resistance here at R4 will cause us the 1000 and 2000 uses the same voltage? That's the point. So, in this case, EMF was given three. Yeah? Let, me, let me clear this. Yeah? Erase all. EMF given three. So here, 3 volt means here positive 3, here 0. Eh? Here 2 volt. Uh, do you agree here 2 volt? Because Kirchhoff second law, the 1000 and 2000 uses 3 volt. So 1000 uses how many volt? Use a potential divider method. 1000 uses how many volt? 1000 uses, what is the voltage of 1000? 1000 uses how many volt? 1000. Divided by total reason, total reason in that loop, eh? in that loop, eh? which is 3000 times 3. Eh? So it just gives you 1 volt. So this shows that the 1000 uses 1 volt. One volt. 
So 3 volt going to drop to 2 volt because 1 volt has been eaten up by the 1000. Eh? So 2 volt. So, yeah, 1000 over 2000 is actually uh, 2000 over R4. Yeah, this is the final formula. Okay. So, actual formula is 1000 over 2000. Eh? 1000 over 2000 should be equals to 2000 over R4. The ratio, the, the gradient, uh, what do you call it? The ratio of the resistance must be both sides must be same. 1000 divided by 2000. Uh, should be equal to 2000 divided by R4. Okay. So from here, you can get the answer. Okay. So the question, the, the thing is, if you have one resistor here, R1, here R2, here R3, R3, and here R4, for the voltage in between them to become zero, conclusion is R1 over R2 must be equal to R3 over R4. This is the rule should be. Eh? So you have four resistance. They're asking what is the volt voltage in between them? Zero. So R1 over R2 must be same as R3 over R4. The ratio of the resistance must be the same. Therefore, the R1 and R3 uses the same voltage. So please remember this formula. Okay. Of these four resistance. Okay, application of potential divider. Eh? As I said, I already told you, variable resistor. Eh? All the sensors act as a potential divider. Uh, this is, I think, the tell that how to control the brightness of the light bulb. Eh? As the resistance of the variable resistors increase, the current in the circuit will drop. Potential difference across RV will increase. This causes TV across the light bulb to decrease. Light bulb become dimmer. Okay. Same method can be used to increase or decrease speed of ceiling fan and car wiper. Yeah. Like your ceiling fan, your air condition, you know, air condition, automatic air condition, let's see. Eh? Automatic air condition. Uh, the aircon must be connected in series with the sensor. The type of sensor they must use is a sensor which detects temperatures in the room. So the sensor should be what? Thermistor. Eh? Thermistor is connected in series in the circuit with the air condition. So the thermistor act as a potential divider for the air condition to control the air condition. Okay. Okay, class. Jordan, potential divider. What is the answer for this? One minute for you. Okay, when four identical PQ and R are connected, they have normal brightness. All of them have the normal brightness. When the four lamps are connected as shown in diagram two, which statement is correct? If this is six volt, what is the voltage for P will be? If all are identical. Anyone can tell me? If E is 6 volt, for identical lamp, that means all of them have the same resistance. What is the voltage of P will be? 1.5 volt. You take the Kirchhoff second law, loop rule. You take this loop. You take this loop. Uh, it should be 3 volt. Eh? Because in a loop, P and Q share the six. So P must take 3 volt, Q must take 3 volt. R must must take three volt. S also must take three volt. If you take the other loop, eh, the other loop. Catch up second law. Tell me, uh, inform us all of them three volt. You now come to this circuit. This is six volt. Now tell me P, Q, R, S. What is the voltage across each of them? Use catch up second law. I think you should be able to get the answer. You use this loop. Use this loop, the first loop. The battery connected to two light bulb. So Q use how many volt? R S how many volt? Three volt. 
or three volt, both three volt. P also three volt, R also three volt. If you use this loop, eh? so that means all of them actually these two are the same circuit. Eh? Both are same circuit. Actually, both of them are same circuit. So the lamp S or the answer, the lamp F normal, right? The lamps F normal, right? So the answer should be C. It's all kind of the normal brains. Okay. So use your Kirchhoff law, potential divider. You can get the answer. Eh? Okay, this one. Uh, one minute for you again. Give me the answer. Potential divider. Potential difference used to give output 2 volt, 3 volt. Oh, this is positive 3 volt. Eh? This is positive 2 volt. So, here yeah, this point is positive 2, here is positive 3. That means R1 uses how many volt? Top here is positive 5. Positive 5 become positive 3 here. So, R1 eaten how many volt? <laughs> okay, to be. So, how many volt R1? It's only. 2 volt. R1 uses 2 volt. 45 volt drop to positive 3 volt. R2 take how many volt? Positive 3 become positive 2 after passes R2. So R2 take how many volt? Take 1 volt. R3 take how many volt? Positive 2 become positive 2 become 0. So R3 take 2 volt. So 2 volt, 1 volt, 2 volt. You start by all the resistor. So tell me technically, R1 greater or R2 greater? Resistance of R1 greater or resistance of R2 greater? R1. R1 greater because use a big voltage. Eh? R1 greater than greater by R2 by how many times? Of course, twice. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah one time. So this is if this is. 1 ohm in, this must be 2 ohm, this must be 2 ohm, right? Uh, if this is 2 ohm in, up must be 4 ohm, down must be 4 ohm. In other words, what is the key thing is, the ratio must be 2, 1, 2. So there the voltage is 2, 1, 2 ratio. So which is answer? R1, R2, R3. So to get ratio voltage of 2, 1, 2, so the answer should be, See, eh? 4, 2, 4. 4 ohm, 2 ohm, 4 ohm. As a ratio of, as a ratio of 2, 1, 2. So, if this voltage is 2 ohm, mean this will be 1 volt, this will be 2 volt. As shown here. Eh? So, answer should be C. So, find the ratio of the resistance. The ratio of the voltage is actually the ratio of resistance. In only in series. Uh, only in series. Okay, I think it shouldn't be a problem here. Yeah? Uh, okay, let we go to the next one. Okay, yeah, this one, come on. This is the potential divider pattern. Try to find all the potential at each and every point. Uh. It might help you. Find what is the voltage here. Find what is the voltage here. Uh, find what is the voltage here. Voltage here. If you know the voltage at this point, uh, this is your Vx. Huh? If you know the voltage here, Vy, the potential difference Vx to Vy is U minus one. Huh? The Vx minus Vy is the potential difference between X and Y. So first find what is the potential at X, potential at Y. Use potential divider method. What is the potential at top here? Because this is 2 volt, up is taken to be positive 2 volt, down is 0 volt. 
So here positive to volt and come to the top, the voltage still positive to volt. Yeah. At the bottom here, the potential here we know is zero volt. Okay. What is the potential at Vx? Anyone? 4 over 3 volt. 4 over 3 volt. 4 over 3 volt. Yeah. How are you got 4 over 3 volt? Because uh, 5 ohm, 5 ohm, 5 ohm, these three are sharing the 2 volt. That means 5 ohm take how much? One third of these 2 volt, right? Because all the resistance are the same. Right? Yeah. So these take one third now. So one third of 2, two volt is 2 over 3 volt. Yeah. So this first 5 ohm, you stop 2 over 3 volt. So positive 2 become yeah, positive. 4 over 3 volt, eh? the voltage at Vx is positive 4 over 3. What is voltage at Vy will be? 2 over 3 volt. Positive, yeah. positive 2 over 3 volt. Because here, yeah, positive 2 drop to positive 4 over 3. After crosses another 5 ohm, another minus 2 over 3 becomes positive 2 over 3. So potential difference between Vx and Vy is? Uh, 4 over 3 minus 2 over 3. So it's actually 2 over 3 now. Final answer. Answer is A. <coughs> so tell me, if you connect X to Y, you put the ammeter here. Okay, current will flow from X to Y or Y to X? Current will flow from X to Y or Y to X? Anyone? X to Y, right? Why? Always current always flow from high potential to low potential. Eh? X has high potential, positive 4 over 3. So current will always flow from I to so current will flow from X to Y. Okay. So this is a potential divider. So whenever you have circuit, you can visualize the you need to visualize what is the potential at every point. Eh? What is the potential at every point? Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, I think we, we finish off this law. Another one only. Uh, okay, last one here. This one. Potential divider. Get this answer. So what range? Eh? So what range of voltages can be obtained within P and Q? C. C. Eh? If you put a voltmeter, what is the range of voltmeter ready you can get here? So is it C? Okay, let's see C. When the voltage become very low, when the V become minimum. When V become minimum, when the resistance is, when the resistance is, when the resistance is low, eh? when the resistance is low. So here, what is the lowest resistance? It could be zero, zero kilo ohm because the variable is the one. So you put the resistance here, zero kilo ohm. Voltage here should be zero volt. Eh? Voltage here will be zero volt, correct? Zero kilo ohm because this variable resistor can go from 0 to 50 kilo ohm watt. And when when the voltmeter reading going to be very low, minimum, and the resistance, uh, when the resistance of the variable resistor is low, right? What is the lowest you can go? 0 kilo ohm. Uh, when it goes 0 kilo ohm, this 0 kilo ohm, this 10 kilo ohm, all the 9 volt will be utilized by the 10 kilo ohm. Okay, so, so the lowest reading the variable resistor can give is how much? 0 volt. That's the V minimum we can give. What is the V maximum we can give? What is the voltage reading can be maximum? Voltage reading here can be maximum. And the resistance at, at the variable resistance is the maximum possible, right? That means when it's become 50 kilo ohm. Eh? And the variable resistance cap 50 kilo ohm, what is the voltage across the voltmeter? V max. So use the ratio potential difference. 50 here, here 10 kilo ohm, here 9 volt. What is the voltage across 50 kilo ohm? 
50 divided by potential different method over how much? What is the total resistance? 60 K okay, times 9. Yeah. So, where is the Vmax? So, Vmax how much? 7.5. Yes, 7.5. So, it should be 0 to 7.5, the volt meter reading across PQ. So, the answer should be B. Eh? 0 to 7.5. Any question from this question? Big question. So you just check the resistance. If variable resistance, you check what is the lowest resistance. When it's lowest resistance, lowest voltage across variable resistance. And the higher resistance, it gives you the yield, the highest voltage. And so you go to the, check the lowest resistance, check, check the potential different method, find the voltage here. Okay. Always what? Uh, R1 or R2, R1 or R1 plus R2 times the total voltage and the potential divider formula to be used. Okay. Okay, class. Uh, last question. Eh? Last question. I have to go to the whiteboard. I show you a circuit. Eh? Okay. You have battery like this, okay? You have resistance here, resistance here. You have a resistance here. Eh? This is 10 volt, this is 2 ohm, this is 4 ohm, this is 8 ohm, okay? This is overall, the question is overall. Eh? I'm including the Kirchhoff law, total reasons and everything, not potential divide only, eh? overall. Eh? Okay. So, what will be the total resistance of this circuit when a bare wire was connected like this? What is the total resistance? A bare wire is connected across here. Bare wire means no resistance. Eh? The wire resistance is zero. What is the total resistance of the circuit? Eight ohm. Very good. It should be eight ohm. Eh? Okay. Because bare wire act as a short circuit. Eh? Act as a short circuit. Current won't flow here. Current won't flow here. So this resistance not counted. Eh? The current will flow only to the bare wire and come back here. So the voltage going to be, the resistance going to be only 8 ohm. Okay. Uh, okay, class. so maybe in the future, maybe next class we can continue to do more questions. So I stop here. Okay, any questions for today? Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, see you back on Monday, uh, your lab. Okay. Uh, I think next week onwards is going to be face to face. Eh? Uh, still, it will be using, uh, I need to record it. So, I'll be using this mode, but I'll I'll overhead project, eh? project the, this uh, picture. Okay. Last. See you.